Before we get started with Recharge tonight, uh, just hearing the news of uh, another school shooting in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, if you had heard today, uh, I just want us to, to spend some time in prayer together. Um, there, there was, there was a, a scare of that sort here in, in Bernie uh, last week year, last semester, or something like that. So uh, certainly just, just those initial uh, emotions and, and that wave of uh, just grief and horror and shock. Uh, so um, you guys go with me before God's throne, and, and we will pray for that situation. Heavenly Father, we trust you. We trust that you are king and that you're sovereign and that you're on your throne. Uh, this, this world is full of evil and confusion and darkness. And uh, Father, right now we pray over this situation and we pray that you would reveal yourself. I know you are right now revealing yourself in the midst of crisis, in the midst of hurt. Um, and the good news of your son, and the hope in the midst of darkness. Darkness and evil tries to prevail. Uh, it, it kills, it, he steals, he um, wants to, to lie and absolutely just destroy lives and community. And um, Father, the hope in Jesus Christ is greater. I know that there are deaths and I know that there is lots of shock right now. And so, Father, I pray for your church to be your hands and feet and uh, to be a shoulder to cry on and to be arms of strength and support and uh, to be able to, to enter into uh, the darkness and to shine the light and the hope of Jesus Christ. Uh, we pray to that end in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, uh, thank you for my excused absence. Last week, my oldest was playing in a football game. It's his only Wednesday that I have to miss this, uh, this semester, and so I wanted to be there. Uh, I began a sermon series that we're gonna walk through on, on Wednesday nights about what is so awful about pride. And Chad uh, served, you, served me and you well last week in just talking about um, the, the fact that the Lord is opposed to the proud, okay? The Lord is opposed to the proud. So catch this. Uh, in 1717, when Francis uh, Louis XIV died, they laid his body in a golden coffin because he had called himself the Sun King. And his court was the most magnificent in Europe. To dramatize his greatness, he had given orders that during his funeral, the cathedral would only be dimly lighted and one special candle set above his coffin. And as the thousands waited in hushed silence, the bishop who began to speak slowly reached down and snuffed out his candle and said, only God is great. Only God is great. You know what's so awful about pride? What's so awful about pride is it's absolutely delusional. It's absolutely delusional to call yourself the sun king and to, like, he's dead. He's dead. That's what happens to every one of us. We are dependent beings. So I'm going to read uh, Romans uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through uh, 23. It'll be on the screen for you. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness 
of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. They became futile in their speculation and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and of four-footed animals and crawling creatures. So the first thing, as we take steps and walk through this semester about what's so awful about pride is pride literally is delusional, okay? I want to speak in terms tonight in terms of the creator versus creation. The creator spoke, spoke, and the universe came into being. He spoke, and trees grew, separated the sky from the land. Guys, scientists are still trying to comprehend, and with all of our amazing technology, just see how large the universe is. From, from galaxies upon billions of galaxies to the ant, God spoke it all into being. He, he crammed six feet of DNA inside one human cell. Now you tell me how you do that. Six feet of human DNA inside, of our code inside one cell, one human cell. There is enough DNA in you to stretch from here to Pluto and back seven times. In you. That's how much DNA and code. The creator spoke. Now you, on the other hand, are a completely dependent being. You take naps. (laughs) When you eat too much at lunch, you get droggy, okay? You need food and air. The sun is 94 million miles away and you can't look directly at it. You and I are dependent beings, okay? Romans 1 tells us that the creator, okay, in verse 19 says that he put knowledge of himself inside of every one of us. That part of being made in the image of God is he put knowledge of himself already inside of you, one. Number two, all of creation speaks to his invisible attributes, his invisible power, his eternal divine nature, right? All of creation speaks, all the way down to the micro level, to galaxies upon galaxies to the fact that there's six foot of DNA in human cell. We just figured that out, right? I know when you guys were in uh, biology class and science, right? What was a cell? It's just this blob. That's all there was, right? Now we can find six feet of DNA inside one cell. He put all that there, okay? That 
All of creation speaks to who he is and his eternal power and divine nature. In chapter 2 of Romans, Paul's going to go on to say, and he gave you a conscience. And every one of us know that we fail our conscience. And you know that you will be face to face with him in the end. That every one of us will have to come face to face with him. In verse 21, for even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. It's a result of pride. This is how awful pride is. It is delusional. Did not honor him as God, as creator. The dependent being who is currently being held together by your creator, who is dependent for every breath, every ounce of air and food, and again, you sleep and you have a finite number of days. Pride causes us to say, I will not honor him as God. Nor give thanks. Nor just pause to be thankful for his magnificence and what he has created. That food tastes good. Right? Food tastes good. He didn't have to make food taste good. He did. What, what is more precious than, than holding a baby and that smell and how incredibly soft and kind of plungy their feet are? I wouldn't say their backside, right? Everyone knows. Soft as a baby's bottom. What is more precious than just holding your loved one's hand? God created this place. And if you remove pride, what, what he requires back for, is just giving thanks. That we would honor him as God and give thanks. So let's just pause and do that right now in closing. Giving thanks to our creator. Heavenly Father, There is no one like you. You are the eternal one. Everything is from you and through you and to you. And you are worthy of all of our adoration. We can't even comprehend you. How you are omnipresent how you're all-knowing and all-powerful. There is no God like you. There is no one like you. And you have made us in your image. And you've made us with this beautiful creation. And we long to give thanks back to you. We do that right now. For simple things, God, thank you for food and for the touch of a loved one and for music and for art, for so much that we have to be thankful for. God, that we have abundance here. But on top of all of that, Father, you have given your son for us that we would know you. He took our sin, he took our frailty, and he died in our stead. That is why we sing. That is why we gather together. Father, please root out the pride in our heart. We do not want to be like the foolish world. 
pretending to be wise, they became fools. We want to recognize you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, God bless you guys.